This is my frozen screen. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We're waiting for everybody to finish coming in. We want more people coming in now. That's just a minute or two after the scheduled start time. So we're just making sure everybody's in here when we get before we get started. You know, I put some background music on. Some <laughs> bass, bass, bass <laughs> to welcome people in. <laughs> Do, 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 do. I was going to say, somebody start singing. For the Imperial March. All right. So, um, do we have somebody here from Books a Million right now? All right. <clears throat> Yeah, we got a few more people in the waiting room and then we'll get started here. All right. Okay, so we'll get started and we'll the um the people as they come in, we'll just and we'll be letting them in. So I want to say hi to hi to KZ Richards real quick. Hey girl. <laughs> hey, hey, there we go. <laughs> All right. So hello and welcome to this event, our Books a Million, Writers of the Future, Volume 39 um, special event, because we've got a special offering for everybody that's joined in. My name is John Goodwin. I'm the president of Galaxy Press, and I want to welcome everybody to this event. We've got uh, winners from all over the world, and um, so that makes it very, very special. This has been recorded so that other people can see afterwards what they just missed um, that didn't make it. But uh, to begin with, uh, let me introduce Emily Goodwin, um, who's going to give you a little brief overview of what's going to be happening here. Okay, so here's the overview. You're all going to buy books. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, if you open the chat box uh, throughout the event, I'm going to uh, several times throughout the event, I will be posting a link in there. And that link is goes to Books A Million. And they have fully autographed books for Writers of the Future, volume 39, and you can get an autographed copy. The winners have signed it, the judges have signed it. Dustin is holding the book up right there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the more, as we go through the event, the more excited you get about this, feel free to go order the book. And um, we'd like to know when you order the book. So I'm also posting in there right now, uh, it's the nerd emoji. So just let us know once you got the book, just post a little nerd emoji. And and then we can see how many of the autograph books were running through this. Sound good? Yes. All right. All right. So um, to begin with, I just want to um, introduce Jody Lanai, the coordinating judge for the Rise of Future contest. And uh, she's going to talk a bit about the book, editing it, and picking the winners. Hello, Jody. Hi, John. Hi, everybody. I am so glad to see you all. It feels it's it's astonishing that it's been more than a month since we were all together and I had so much fun with all of you. But I have to tell you how much fun it was to go through the stories and discover all of yours one by one. Because over the course of the year, I would pick out eight stories from all of the ones that were sent in. But I could I could tell how special some of these were. The, what, what we have in this book are just completely astonishing and wonderful in, in the variety, the humor, the pathos, the beauty, the research, the, the prose. And I just had a delightful time going through each of these stories. The people that you see before you, the writers and the illustrators, are talents that you're going to see in the future that I'm looking forward to see, seeing more from them. Because just the sample that I was able to see was a delight. And when put, um, putting the book together, it's a hard choice as to which one is, you're going to see first. So it, I, I, that was in the hands of my co-editor, Dean Wesley Smith. Is, is Dean on? He is not. No. 
don't see him. But the, the fun of putting together an anthology is how to introduce a reader to the book. And it just, I was so excited about so many of them that I, I wanted to pick out, you know, we have a romping space opera, we have a diplomatic contact with, with um, aliens for the first time, we have foxes appearing out of nowhere in a wonderful mystical universe. We have such fantastic stories and the illustrations that went with them, which of course I didn't see until the, the day of the uh, grand event, just fit them perfectly. So I hope that all of you will pick up a copy of this book because you will be delighted. Great, thank you. And Maliva, who is the um, managing editor for uh, The Rise of Future, um, also has a few additional details she wants to share with you based upon the amazing reviews we've been getting. So Maliva. <laughs> I think All right, she bumped here out. Am. Here I am oh, here. I am here. So um yeah, so I'm I'm excited. I, I get to work with with Jody and Dean and uh Dean Wesley Smith, that is, and and um our our editors for our book and uh and then all of the winners every year. It's such a so, so much fun to read all of these stories and work all work on all these stories and put together this anthology and work with um, our art director and all of our illustrators. That's fantastic being able to pair all the stories. And then and then when everybody gets to see them, it's just so exciting because it's so much so much love and 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 care goes into creating the story, but also all the art. And and um, it's a really special anthology. And I think the reviews that we've been getting so far are really showing us that, that other people are seeing that. And we got a great review from Library Journal, which I wanted to um, share because it, it mentions quite a few of the um, writers and their stories. And I just wanted to share it. It says the 12 winners of the 39th Annual Writers of the Future Award are presented in this anthology of outstanding new voices, telling stories that cover the range of speculative fiction. From Space Piracy, Piracy for Beginners by J.R. Johnson, to Time Travel, A Trickle in History by Elaine Midco, and Timelines and Budlines by L.H. Davis, to Dragons, Moonlight and Funk by Marianne Zenos. The wide net cast by this contest brings together the gallows humor of David Hankins' Death and the Tax Man, where the Grim Reaper is bested by an IRS agent, and the bureaucratic red tape of David K. Henriksen's White Elephant, in which Venus is sold to refugee aliens and puts them into the same volume as an exploration of whether dating an AI is real enough for love. Under My Cypresses by Jason Palmatier. There's something for every genre reader among this year's winners, as well as stories from established writers, Kevin J. Anderson and S.M. Sterling, and two how-to essays for hopeful SF writers and illustrators. Verdict? This collection of winners will satisfy readers of SF, epic, and urban fantasy and the squishy places in between where speculative fiction is mashed into brave new worlds and mixed up old ones. So that's mm. fun. That's a great, a great review. Plus, it's, it's awesome that this goes to all the librarians. So it's just really good for that. Yeah, and we've been doing some some nice promotions with librarians. So hopefully we 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 end up in a, in a lot of library libraries. Plus we have the audio book, so we have all that additional, you know, additional ways that we can reach people. So ebook, audio book, print book. It's a it's a lovely book. So I'm I'm excited. The cover is fantastic. A lot of people that we've been working with um are our distributors and and um booksellers and um the book talker, book Instagrammers, all those people we've been in touch with are excited. So, yeah. So that's so, great. Right. Yeah, so that's what I contribute. Right, well, thank you very much. Yeah. So with that, we're gonna go in right now and play the book trailer to get to set the, the tempo for the rest of what we're doing. As well as we introduce all the winners that are here and then uh, have some uh, reading of three of the different stories, parts of three different stories. So Jason?
All right. That was, uh, I love that one. It's so much better too, because we don't have all the all this, the sound in the auditorium. So I hear a lot more just now than I heard actually at, at the event with all the other effects that went along with the, with the imagery. All right. Again, um, if you um, want to get a copy of the autograph book, because we have, we got copies that we arranged with Books A Million, that they got copies of of the books that were signed by the judges that were in attendance and all the winners that were in attendance. Um, so that's what you're actually getting if you get a copy of this book right now. So this is not available anywhere else other than Books A Million. So take advantage of this. They were smart on um, on doing this. And um, so there you go. And when you get it, please do the, uh, the nerd emoji on it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through uh, each card with the art and story. Now, the idea is that as we do it, any of the writer or illustrator for that story, we want you to speak up and say a few words. The writer can give your um, short little pitch that we that we drilled at, at the workshop and then the illustrator as well about same thing for yourselves. Because I know that um, uh, we got a lot of winners here that I want you everybody to be able to meet. And again, this is all being recorded too. So we'll be able to continue with this so people can see you. So Jason, let's start with uh, with the first one here. So Devin, you want to say something? Of course, yes. Um, so my story, Kitsune, which is named after the Japanese myth of foxes you can turn into women and back again, tells the story of Reina, a woman who is lost in a perfectly adequate life. Um, but when, when miraculous creatures long extinct begin to appear in her desert home, it causes Reina and the woman around her to create change where they can know they couldn't see avenues previously. And my amazing artwork is by Alea Knowlton, who isn't here today, but she is an extraordinary artist. And I would definitely recommend checking out her. If you search your name, you can find her work online. Absolutely. Just so you know, anybody who has a website or any type of a page to ArtStation, wherever it is, when you go to writersofthefuture.com and go to Writers of the Future volume 39, list all the winners. Anybody that's got that, there's a there's a hot link to their page. So that's on it's on writersofthefuture.com. So you'll be able to see. Um, Devin, as well as Alea. Okay, so thank you very much. Next. Thanks. Scott. Hi, I'm Marianne Zenos, and um, I don't think April Solomon's here tonight, but she's the amazing illustrator who um, illustrated my story called Moonlight and Funk. Moonlight and Funk is about a 900-year-old vampire who lives in Key West, and she runs into a dragon one night on New Year's Eve, and the dragon offers her a gift and a trade and she has to make a decision about whether to take it. Um, I loved working seeing April's work and um, and it's wonderful in the book. So thank you. You're very welcome. That's, it's an awesome story. And you're right. April did a wonderful job on uh, on illustrating your your story. Yes, she did. OK, good. So David Hankins, you're on. So my story, Death of the Tax Man, was illustrated by the amazing Sarah Morrison, who is here today. Sarah, go ahead and unmute and say hi. Oh, hi. Uh, so Death of the Tax Man is about the Grim Reaper trapped in an IRS agent's dying body who must regain his powers before he dies and faces judgment for his original sin. I had a lot of fun writing the story and absolutely loved seeing Sarah's art when she when they did the presentation. It's just it's perfect having the tax man there with the, the side ready to do his so, thing. So, Sarah, so tell about how you came up with that particular um, incarnation. Well, first of all, uh, I'm Sarah Morrison, and I paint storytelling fantasy portraits. So, of course, I had to choose Frank to paint the portrait of uh, in this uh, fantastical setting. I know it's just amazing how you when you when it first came up, it was just like, whoa! I love that. <laughs> I love the audience reaction, and I loved seeing David's reaction the first time he saw it. <laughs> yeah, he just made a beeline to it, and just. This is an advance notice. Um, in a bit later, we're going to be seeing them or listening to them onto the Rise of Future podcast. But we're going to have uh, David and Sarah on as they're announcing a um, a Kickstarter for the um, Death and Tax Man novel that will be coming out uh, later on. In at least the, the Kickstarter starts in August, I think. Right. Right. Yep. We'll be doing the Kickstarter in August. Um, in order to get everything uh, together, you know, assuming we can uh, pull in enough funds to get it printed and published uh, to come out either later this year or early next year. 
Well, if we have anything to do with that with this uh, with the podcast, it's we're definitely going to put throw everything into it with that as well to help make sure this. I appreciate is it. Yes, over two million listens each episode, so we'll hopefully get enough people on that. Okay, good. And next, Jason Palmatier. Hello. Jason, there you go. Yep. Yeah. So my story is under uh, my cypresses, and it was illustrated by Helen Yee, and she did a great job of uh, capturing it, sort of a cyberpunk metaverse future uh and in it the main character lynn she has to kind of decide what's uh real to her the love that she lost or the love that she may have found so uh the story yeah it's great and that's one of the ones that was talked about in um on the library journal review right yeah they did mention that yeah, yeah. and they did a good job of capturing exactly kind of like what that what the the core of the story is and it's uh it's an interesting uh, read, I think, for a not too distant future. Exactly. All right, great. So, uh, and Helen is is not here, but um, anyway, it was just again amazing art. Okay, next, White Elephant, David. Yes, hello. Um, my story is White Elephant, and the art is done by uh, Kristen Hadaway, and uh, it's a story about. Um, an alien migratory race that decides to pay humanity a visit on mass. And I like to think that um, a truly advanced civilization would be a civilized one. And the story has to do with the uh, compromises and agreements that the two races um, uh, make together to make make a better future. Absolutely. And so in case you don't know, uh, Dave is the Golden Pen Award winner. So he got the, uh, the big trophy that he had to uh, build up his muscles Oh boy, I tell you. Both of the trophies down. That puppy was heavy. <laughs> All right, great. And Kristen's not here, I don't think, is she? I don't think so. Okay, okay, good. All right, next. Piracy for beginners. Uh Jennifer, J.R. Johnson. Hello. Yes. My story was Piracy for Beginners. It was illustrated, as you can see, by Chris Bins, who did an amazing job capturing one of the most dynamic fight scenes in the story and I just loved it. So I don't think he's here today, but he's a fantastic illustrator. He did a great job. Um, the story itself was, uh, it came about because I wanted to write something fun. But at the same time, I wanted to write, uh, I wanted a character that would have to face difficult decisions and have to stand up for what's right. And so in the end, I brought the two of those things together and was able to create a story about a disgraced spaceship captain uh, who was battling pirates to save Earth's last best chance for peace. And there are things like weaponized donuts involved. So <laughs> there's fun, there's serious stuff, there's lots of action, and I had a great time writing it. And I was I was very uh, honored to be chosen for this, but I I hope you like this story because I had a great time doing it. Absolutely, and you just and Jennifer just did an amazing job two days ago on um, on uh, TV up there in Canada. It was a, I think it was like a six minute or nine minute interview. It was just, it was amazing um, what she did talking about it. So hopefully we get a lot of people entering the contest, a lot more people in, in Canada as well as people buying the book. So well done to you on that. That was a great interview. Thank you. All right, next, a trickle in history, Elaine Midco. Yes, hi. Um, this was illustrated by Jose Sanchez, one of our two illustrators from Costa Rica. I think our other illustrator is here, but Jose is not. He also goes by the name Pedro Trop, and he's wonderful. So you should definitely look him up and look up his artwork. Um, a trickle in history uh, takes place in the future after the second Holocaust, when the very last few Jews on earth uh, embark on a, a rather desperate mission to try to rewrite the past. So it's it's a little bit a, a time travel story, but it's also a story about resilience in, in a time of difficulty and, and the struggle to maintain one's identity uh, when sometimes folks don't want you to. So I hope that you enjoy it. Uh, and I certainly uh, enjoyed uh, writing it and enjoyed my week at the WOTF uh, workshop. Absolutely. Great, it was, it was an awesome story. And I love the way too, how you um, solved it. That, <laughs> that problem, it was, it was a, that was like 
the best solution what you came up with. So that was really good. Thank you. All right. So next now, The Withering Sky with uh, Arthur Manners. Is Arthur here? I don't think he made it. Anyway, this is a, this is a story that um, dark fantasy. And um, so, again, this is where you find that Rise the Future is not said like this is a this type of a, of a book. It's got everything from um, hard science fiction to light science fiction. This is dark fantasy um, and everything in between that we've got here. So um, Jiming Luo did a great job. This this actually depicts the story itself, just the dark fantasy aspect of it. So if you like if you like Stephen King, anything that's horror or dark, you're going to really dig this story. Okay, next, The Children of Desolation. Spencer, are you here? All right, we don't have Spencer, but we have a special treat. We have the illustrator all the way in from Romania. It's 11 o'clock or 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. 11.25 right now. So welcome, Sibarian. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, well, since I haven't been there at the main event and the workshop, I'm pleased to say that I'm finally happy to kind of meet you all. Yeah. And um, we'll definitely be meeting you next year, though, because we're going to work that out so you get your visa and you're able to arrive. I truly, truly hope so, because I, I would love to, to meet you all in person and to be there. Um, well, what can I say? It's, a little bit about your your artwork and how you because no because Spencer's not here to talk about his story. So talk about how you decided on on that image and a little bit about the story. Well, I came up with some sketches because I wanted to um, illustrate the main characters of the story, and uh, the I kind of did a sketch or two of uh, one of the scenes that impressed me. But uh, ultimately, uh, it was better not to include those. And I had a lot of help and direction from Meleva, who helped me. Um, she kind of guided me towards a more, um, uh, how, how can I say, uh, you know, the, the, um, the posters from, for the Star Wars movies? Yeah. She kind of, uh, she kind of directed me to, to do something uh, like that. And uh, so I, I basically, came up with this arrangement to, to like incorporate the main characters and uh, have something more close to that. And then after, after Echo was a tremendous help and direction. She was, uh, she, the two of them are the reason why. And of course, Spencer, because, well, it's a story. And it's yeah. your amazing art too. So I don't want to downplay that because you did an amazing job on, on what you did here, the the power in the picture and, and your colors and pulling all those things here is just just really amazing. You really are an illustrator of the future. Thank you. you know, we're all looking forward to meeting you next year. So we definitely want to push this through and make it happen. Me too. Me too. Okay, Alexandra. Okay. Next, Jason. Timelines and bloodlines. Lawrence, are you here? All right. And Clarence? I don't think neither, Clarence neither of them are here. All right. So um, this one's a very interesting uh, uh, time travel story. And uh, even though you may have no time travel, you're guaranteed that any story that makes it in this book, you're not familiar with that adaptation of, the, um, of whatever trope it is. So this is a unique view of that trope as well. So um, guarantee that you've not experienced this kind of, of time travel and how it plays out. Okay, next. The last history, Sam Parr and Dal V. I don't think either of them are here. No. Okay, good. Um, Dal V is the illustrator grand prize winner. Just an amazing piece of art. The, the depth that he created in his in his art is just truly amazing. Just you just look at it and just like, wow, it's amazing what he did. And you're right, uh, Marianne. The, the story is is truly um again, unique. It's not something you're going to have, have ever seen before or read before. It was just amazing what uh, he did on this thing on The Last History. Okay. Um, the Fall of Credenda M. So TJ Knight, so you're on. 
here. All right. So for this story, we have in the future, our telescopes have become so powerful. We can see life on other planets, but everything we see is in the past because of the speed of light until it isn't. So this guy right here, he aims a telescope through a wormhole and everything he sees and everything we see is live. Only one problem, when he finds this planet full of, full of people, as you can see in the little image there, he also sees the asteroid that's headed straight for them. So as you can see from the picture, he decides to take a daring risk and, and go up there and see them because he made a mistake in his past where he didn't go and see someone and they passed away. So in order to right his wrong, he goes all the way up there to visit them. So this story is about a little bit about redemption, but it's also about uh, friendship and, and just showing up when it's time to show up. Absolutely, just a, a really, really good story. And what we got Chris here from uh, Costa Rica. He's our Costa Rican rock star. It's interesting when, um, I was a little bit of a pre-story on this thing here, when um, there's a comic convention in Costa Rica and our keynote speaker, Dan Farr, Put in a call um, to the owner of the Costa Rican Comic Con and mentioned we have Chris Arias. And so Chris was invited and he was one of the um, uh, key guests there at the comic convention. And since then, he's done either two or three major television shows. He's done a couple of radio, he's had print. And all of this is them writing to him, calling him to schedule. He's got a big feature still coming out on, on the biggest TV in Costa Rica. But anyway, uh, with that introduction, hello, Chris. So his uh, microphone isn't where. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Emily. No, you want to read? No, I was just saying. Uh, he wrote in the chat that his microphone isn't working. So yes, okay. but he says thank you so much. He said he, he says I had the pleasure to illustrate such an amazing story as the fall of Kadenga M by TJ Knight. For me, it was very emotional experience to read the story for the first time. That's indeed a, a correct assessment from my perspective, too. Anyway, so well done to you, Chris, and amazing for you there, TJ. Okay, next. Was that the last one? That's the last one. Okay, good. So um, anyway, it's nice seeing uh, all you winners that are here talking about uh, what was happening on, the, on your stories in the art. So now what we got is, um, first of all, are there any questions straight away? If so, put the questions in the chat and I will seek to um, uh, forward them. But we're now going to have um, the three of our winners read a section of uh, their story, starting with uh, TJ Knight on the fall of Credenda M. So go ahead. Sorry, guys. I, <laughs> I went from last to first. Hold on. Give me a second. I got my bookmark. <laughs> Okay, so what I've decided to do, I tried to find a spot that would end in some kind of cliffhanger to make it very exciting. And as it turns out, the first page, first page and a half, that's where it's at. Everybody can hear me, I hope? Yep. All right, so I'm going to read, yeah, about, about a full page. And this is, uh, you saw the main character on, on the, the image just a few seconds ago. And so he's a network tuner. So he's sitting in a high rise right now with a suit on and he's sweating. So he's back on earth when the story starts. I'm in my cubicle long before my overnight shift begins, face pressed to the visor of my ultrascope, which rises to the ceiling like an organ pipe. Within net one's Houston high rise, I inhale the pungent and sweet vapors of my fellow tuners, espressos and junk drinks while we scour the heavens for alien entertainment. Finding something new is a challenge as we've already got planets with the apex predators or insects, others have dinosaur-like creatures the size of houses, and several Pompeii-style events where you can watch lava flow toward fleeing civilizations. Wipeouts are Net One's most popular reruns. I spot a speeding asteroid by only the faintest hint of reflected sunlight. My display indicates it's new, so I tap out a string of numbers on my smooth glass de desktop, then pause. Where are you going? I murmur. Shh, one of my coworkers chides. No, you. I give my usual mature retort. I follow the asteroid's trajectory to a planet. Impact in two weeks. 
Like instinct, a thrill runs through me. This is it. Corporate adjectives like hot and wicked spin through my mind. I can already hear the blip ads repeating the word destruction. I tune toward the planet just as my rational mind takes over. Oh God, please be uninhabited. A salty drop traces down my forehead to my nose and tickles until I sneeze. Shut up, Hank, someone yells, followed by a chorus of shh. Tap, focus, tap, tap, adjust, zoom. I sail over the planet's surface, seeing vast algae-covered oceans, barren mountains cut by flowing rivers, and finally, a ramshackle hut. Damn. Impacts are awesome, extinctions are not. Around the hut are long rows of cultivated violet fronds waving in a breeze. Black, leafless trees form a nearby wood. I find workers hunched over, picking. A bipedal child, short, brown skin like tree bark, holding a ball. The child looks toward the sky. I'm about to erase the coordinates. Forget I ever found this doomed planet when the child and I make eye contact. That's it. And with that, <laughs> that's it's an amazing, oh, that's just, if that doesn't hook you for a story, I don't know what will. You're not alive, you're a tree. <laughs> All right. So again, if anybody has any questions, be sure to please put them in the chat so that we can address them. And now we're gonna go on to the next uh, author, Marianne Zenos with her section for her story, Moonlight and Funk. Hi everybody. I was trying to decide if I should read the serious part about the vampire alone making a decision about life and death or dance, dragons dancing on the beach and i'm giving you the dance dragons dancing on the beach so yay <laughs> so just after sundown on to oh levine's the vampire tan is the dragon just after sundown on tuesday night Avine swung her cooler by her side and walked to the fort she'd left the metal detector and trash bags at home and had put a six pack of beer and a pint of strawberries in the cooler just in case she wore her favorite pink high top sneakers matched with dangling flamingo earrings her phone contained a dance list with music by Prince, Sheila E, and some mix 70s funk. When Tan said modern, it might have meant anything from Stravinsky to hip hop, but Avine imagined even dragons liked Prince. Tan was smoking his pipe when Avine arrived, and Glory was chewing on a battered sneaker. Tan's face was its own again, pointed and reptilian, and it smiled when I took the package, setting it aside. I will open the gift when you make your decision. As Avine settled on the sand next to the small dog, wondering when, when to tell them about the coin, oh, she'd stolen a coin, Tan handed her the pipe and waited a moment before speaking. If you choose the blood, it will not change the person who was and will always be Avine. It will simply cure what is vampire, the van virus, which is also an immunity. You will become human, but within 11 centuries of memories, emotions, and transgressions to carry, Okay, she said, but she thought for a moment and added, damn. It is good to have old friends of Ian, friends who are truly very old. We understand the centuries. If you survive, you could come with us and be a different sort of hunter. Avine wasn't used to feelings or friendship for that matter. So she said nothing while Tan smoked its pipe. Suddenly, Glory barked, jumping up from the sand, hackles raised, dipping at the sky. Tan jumped up. Now you will see beauty nestling. Now you will see true glory, my beloved Glorious. Glory is my soul friend, but Glorious is my soul mate, my partner in crime, my Ruhi, as they say in your homeland. The dog lifted its head and howled at the moon. What began as a chihuahua's howl grew into a deep and resonant dragon's roar. Tian roared in return and shouted something in a language more ancient than Arabic, which Avine hoped was a call for music. She pulled out her phone and portable speakers. The first song in the queue was Fire by the Ohio Players. Glory was now a yellow gold dragon, scaled and horned like tan, but rounder and brighter with large shoulder spikes. The yellow dragon stood on two legs and ran to hug tan, then it turned and squealed. I love this song. Stretching its arms up to the moon, it began to dance hips swiveling like a rocking boat. It swerved and curved, circling like the path of the moon. Some would call it belly dancing, but Avine knew the dance as Rox Baladi. Damn, Avine said, 
I didn't even know dragons had hips. Nice. Nice. Thank you very much, Marianne. That's um, That was such a fun story. Again, it's like, how do you think of these ideas? And I've, I mean, I've been doing this. This is volume 39. I came on board on volume two. And it's just amazing how each year, just new ideas, new, fresh new voices that come out with, even though it's the same trope or similar tropes, it's it's like a new take on a new you know, way that like this type of a fantasy is like, I've not seen this before. And we're going to have um, the, uh, all you winners here, like, you know, that we, we match you effort for effort to be able to help you to complete that kickstart of your career um, for the next level up as, as a writer. So, um, you know, anything you like I said, I, we're going to be having um, um, David um, on for this podcast coming up on the uh, Death and the Tax Man coming out as a novel. And so it's going to be, you know, have a lot of fun, you know, just to continue to, to watch your careers grow. And we have no fixed ideas other than the fact that you're extremely talented. And if you want to do it, we want to help you as much as possible doing it. So that, since that was the original intention uh, by Mr. Hubbard when he first created it, the contest back in 1983 was to provide the helping hand for the aspiring writer and then a few layers, a few years later, the aspiring artists for the creative efforts to be seen and acknowledged. And it's truly done that. We're about 900 winners strong now over the years. And so many have gone on to such amazing careers. And um, Mr. Herbert's legacy for creating this is uh, unsurpassed by anybody else. And it's interesting now that so many of the reviews come in saying that nothing is done more for the genre science fiction and fantasy than the writers and illustrators of the feature contests. And it just, with winners like you, um, it bears out that it's just, it's the truth. It speaks loudly. This is the quality of stories. Volume 38 just received two gold awards so far for best science fiction of the year from the uh, Benjamin Franklin Awards. And we just got it from the IPI. So that's, that's pretty amazing. You know, this is the best science fiction for the year from independent publishing. So we're very excited about that. Rise of the Future has those. Anyway, um, that's um, that said, we've got uh, one more person that's going to read uh, their, from their story, uh, David Hankins from Death and the Tax Man. Thank you, John. Uh, so the scene leading up to this, uh, the Grim Reaper is in the in Frank Totman's body and he's in his basement at the moment. I retrieved a rolled up bundle of copy paper. Pictures of ancient Sumerian tablets filled every page with handwritten translations scrawled along the edges. My breath caught and the papers crinkled in my grip. This was it. I drew a deep breath, smoothed out the papers and read. I wasn't limited by human language barrier, so translation wasn't a problem. The content was. There was nothing here about swapping souls. It was a simple summoning spell. I dropped into the recliner with a huff and read through again. Nothing. I scratched my jaw. Perhaps Frank summoned a spirit and got the spell from them. I eyed the apothecary cabinet's little cubby holes. Follow Frank's steps. Summon a demon, then ask it about the spell. I nodded to myself, jumped up, and set to work. Fifteen minutes later, the Sumerian circle was set up with candles, cinnamon, and bone dust from a Sumerian priest, if the baggy label was to be believed. I turned off the light, chanted the incantation seven times, then pricked my finger over the circle before snatching my hand back. A bolt of red lightning arced up when my blood hit the cement. It bounced off the circle's invisible walls, splitting and multiplying until an inferno of crackling red electricity connected cement to bare joists. My skin tingled and my hair stood on end before the entire light show condensed down into a single bolt again. It struck the center of the circle with a hellish boom that rattled the stairs. Lava bubbled through the cement and from that rose a demon's hideous form, clad in a wrinkled gray suit. He stood only two feet tall. I smiled, the knot in my chest easing somewhat. It was Alvin recently promoted head of bureaucratic torments. Not a friend, really, but our paths had crossed. Horns poked through his thin, greasy comb-over, and his sharp red eyes glared at me. He pointed a clawed finger. 
That's it, Frank. I'm sending my cousin Brutus to make your life a living hell until the day you die. Then, when your soul finds its way to hell, I'm gonna... I am not Frank Tootman, I said. And Elvin paused, his angry glower turning to confusion. He focused on my eyes and gasped. In the name of Lucifer, he whispered. He did it. Elvin's brows scrunched. Oh, Grim, how you doing? Heat surged through my chest, and my breath came short and fast. You, you knew? I stepped forward, fists clenched, breaking the circle with a flash of red electricity. You knew Frank Totman's plan and didn't think to warn me? He stole my side, my power, my very identity. My hand shot toward Elvin's throat. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you on that. So um, does anybody, I'm going to go into um, a little bit about the audiobook in a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions as, as of yet on any of the, the stories? Or one thing that um, I was curious about was um, anybody, because Matt says, what makes Rise of the Future such a good read? And it's okay for you to be um, um, one of the winners talking about it too, because you've been reading the books for a while. But what makes Rise of the Future such a good read? If you're if you're a fan of science fiction and fantasy, why should somebody read Rise of the Future? Anybody have any um, um, answers that they'd like to originate? Well, I can offer the reason I started reading, really? The reason I started reading and enjoying them was because I had found that I liked the I liked the endings of these stories. A lot of the year's best stories that I'd read over the years had they kind of had that cliffhanger ending or the uh, the ending where you didn't really know what happened. But the thing I liked most about the Rise of the Futures is not every story, but most of the stories they they had a satisfying conclusion. And so when I saw that Dave Farland uh, emphasized the denouement and and the conclusion. I kind of realized that it's it's where he was coming from and it's where the stories are coming from. And it's this kind of stories that get selected. So I feel satisfied with with the endings of the stories and and I don't leave the stories of the book feeling like I, I didn't I, I feel satisfied. I guess that that's really that's I feel like a, a full belly of of reading after I after I finish. That's great. That's actually a very good answer there because it's true. You know. I mean, you have you're the really are the best of the best. We get a lot of entries. You mean you've been you were entering for how many years? Uh, Twelve years and thirty two entries. Yeah, so that's amazing what you've what you've done to persevere on that to make it happen. Um, so Devin says here, um, everyone definitely gets different things out of it, but for me. It was both the craft discussions with judges Jody Lynn Nye and Tim Powers and the community of creatives you leave with. So, um, and then Devin, anything in particular on the stories themselves, what you've gotten out of it or having read it? I'm, I'm assuming you've read uh, previous books or previous stories. I think it's the the breadth of them. Um, I really like to read widely. I will read anything um and I write in a lot of different ways as well so it's as a writer I get a lot out of these stories by showing me all different avenues but as a reader I also get to experience different worlds in one book which I think is a really extraordinary thing most anthologies are themed or really narrow and this one goes as broad as possible so absolutely that's that's really true because we always promote and say we got something for everybody yeah and it's true we do. Did you want to say something there too, Marianne? I did. I what I was just thinking that the judges really make the made a huge um, inspiration for me in applying for the contest because being able to send my story to people whose stories I like uh -huh. was just like it was a thrill. And I know the first time I became a finalist and I realized who was reading my story that week. I want. I just want to say this is kind of personal, but I just want to say I felt like that was the week I became a writer. Yeah. I said, "Oh, somebody whose book I bought is reading my book this week and my story this week," and I I felt that it had made me have much more faith in myself as a writer that I could write more. So that's just the one one of the most amazing things about this contest that doesn't exist other places. So, 
Okay, good. Well, thank you for that. That's um, it's absolutely true. Anybody else have anything they want to originate on this? For me, the a lot of the stories, I, I find the new authors that I like. Like from volume 38, uh, there were a couple that I really connected with the stories and I start, went found the authors you know, on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that and started following them and actually started learning more about them and finding other things they've written. So it's that introduction to new voices that I just, I loved. And so again, here in 39, there's so many great new voices that uh, I've now gone uh, and, you know, looked up all of my fellow winners' websites and got, what else have they written? And it's a great way to find great new authors and great new stories. Absolutely. Well, good. Yeah. That's I could add. Go ahead. Oh, Josh. Oh, yeah. If I get out, I'm uh, kind of on to what Devin said. She sees she's very well read and she will read anything. And I had read a lot when I was younger and then I kind of just lost time. And so I hadn't read a whole lot, a lot of stuff. And so the very interesting thing about Writers of the Future is that that breath, uh, when you read it, it can bring you back in. Like uh, Arthur's story, for instance, was, you know, a very kind of like grim space thing that I'd never read before, you know, that style of story before, but I was, I was really interested in it. So, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to check out some grim dark stuff from, from here on out because, you know, I just got introduced to it through writers of the future. And uh, I think that's really important um, because yeah, like Devin said, a lot of the anthologies are themed, uh, which are cool, but then you kind of just read what you know and the writers of the future lets you see the, the breadth of what is in this genre and uh, maybe introduce you to some, new genre, subgenre in there that you really love. Absolutely. That's, that's a great point. Thank you. All right. So like I said, uh, at, this, at, at the start of this, um, of this event, we also did, a, it's a first for Rise of the Future, where Galaxy Press published its own audiobook. And so, um, Jason, do we have a, um, a bit of a trailer or intro we've got for the audiobook you can play? Well, hello there. I'm Jim Meskimen. I am one of the three narrators of this anthology, the new L. Ron Hubbard Presents Writers and Illustrators of the Future, Volume 39. The other two narrators just happen to be my beautiful wife. Hi, my name is Tamara Meskimen. And my beautiful daughter. Hey guys, I'm Taylor Meskimen. And you guys, these stories are just incredible. I was reading them and I was being fully transported to other galaxies and universes. And these stories are just really new and amazing. And I know you're going to love them. What I love about narrating this particular book, the stories that I read, is that they're all completely different. So they all require a kind of a different approach, uh, different kinds of characters, different, really different kinds of narrating. And uh, so that's fun for me. I, I love to change up my voice and, and to do a lot of you know, a lot of different kind of bells and whistles and uh, fireworks with my voice. This book is filled with amazing stories that are gonna take you to many galaxies and beyond. Also filled with beautiful illustrations. You're just gonna love this. I'm also thrilled that this is a project that every year uh, collects the greatest stories out there from writers that have not yet made their mark, but who will one day be stellar, stellar names in the future. Not too far in the future either. If you're a sci-fi fan, fantasy fan, you gotta pick this up because these are the writers of the future, guaranteed. You should definitely check it out. Enjoy. So there you go. It's um the audiobook is just is, is just really, really good. Um, and if you've not gotten it yet, I highly recommend you um, get it. It's, um, I guess you can get it on, uh, if you go to Amazon, you can get it, Audible has it. And where else can uh, people get it? I believe everywhere audiobooks everywhere. are sold. We have very yeah. wide distribution. Yeah. Good. Yeah, and yeah. if they don't have it where you want it, ask them for it, and then they'll get it. There you go. If they don't have it, tell them they're <laughs> they're still out of the loop. They should have it.
anyway, so um, if there's anybody else that has any other uh, questions, um, now it's a chance to be able to ask. We've got all these authors here ready for you right now to answer any questions that you've got. Um, is there any of you that have any new, um, or actually I wanna know, Chris, what's it been like there in Costa Rica coming back as a winner mm -hmm. for Mars? If you had a, a TV crew come out to meet you here at, at, the, at the event, and then you go back there and all of a sudden, we're not reaching out to media, they're reaching out to you. What's it been like? His microphone is not working, oh, unfortunately. So he, sorry. He's but, uh, to... from, from his emails, it's been uh, overwhelming, right, Chris? It's been uh, an adventure for him. Yeah. Anybody else has any news you want to be able to, uh, to uh, say to the people listening right now on, on, this, um, on this event? Any other winners that have something you want to be able to, to say? Uh, John, John, I'm I, I'm not a winner, but I, you know, everybody knows me from doing the publicity and and media booking, and I just want to say thank. We've been getting some incredible, you know, press online, TV, radio, all that, and I want to thank you much, so much for your cooperation, and uh, we're looking to do more, and I hope you'll uh, chime in and help out with the book signings and. Uh, We'll do some more media there. Great. Thank you very much, Carmen. It's, it's been amazing. This has been the best year we've had yet, I think, in terms of media. So it's, it's been really good. The media has been very receptive on this. Yes, TG and that's correct. Carmen is a total winner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So Jody asks, any new publications coming up? For winners? Actually, yes. Um, I have one coming with Zombies Need Brains, and it is another story with the Grim Reaper called The Grim Reaper's Game. And so that'll be coming out, uh, I believe, this fall in the anthology Game On. Good. Please and I have some new covers coming out. Uh, there's an Australian publisher, IFWG Australia, and I have a cover coming out on um, uh, Masters of Scent, Volume 2, Tumblers of Roland, and there's also going to be a book coming out, uh, John T's Unicorn. Great. And David Henriksen. Yes, I have a, a story coming out in Old Moon Quarterly uh, in the fall, I think, called uh, Well Met at the Gates of Hell. Good. All right. I've... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I've got a couple of things coming out. Um, I'm mostly poetry. Um, this is my first big fiction, but I do have a short story coming out in Icarus Writing Collective, as well as Poetry and Word West Review and the 2023 Connecticut Literary Anthology by Woodhall Press, all that's, coming this year. That's great, Devin. It's amazing how you make cross over as well and do so well in both. Mm -hmm. so that's cool. Go ahead, Elaine, you go ahead. What? Oh, um, this summer I should have uh, uh, a short story coming out on Escape Pod. Uh, both in print and audio. Um, and it's actually uh, a reprint of my uh, 2022 uh, Jim Bain uh, Short Story Award winner. So they decided to put it on a skate pod, which makes me very happy. Absolutely. Yeah, we were there at the uh, at the awards there at Dragon Con, the Dragon Awards, when your name was announced and it all came up there on the screen. <laughs> and, uh, and then Emily said, she's a wolf winner, because this is before I met you. Mm -hmm. so that, that was great being there to see you being announced. Yeah. All right. Someone else is going to say something. I was. Um, I have a little avalanche of stuff coming out. And um, <laughs> I have something in an anthology that's called Underdogs Rise. And then another anthology called Written with Pride. And this new one is coming out called Other Indifferent, which is a great name. And then Tight House is publishing one of my short stories. And then I just sold another one. After I got the award, like I got this, like all of a sudden it was like, poo -poo, and they, uh, um, I don't know, I sold a bunch of stories all at once. So, Congratulations. Awesome. that's well done. We'll accept your article to the to the Rise of Future blog whenever you feel like sending it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Absolutely. Anybody right. else? Anything? Yeah, I do have uh, one short story coming out in the uh, anthology uh, anthology Solar Flare from Zombie Needs Brains and. It'll come out the same time as the one that David's in. Um, the show will be out about the same. I think it's in usually July or something like that. They come mm -hmm. out. So. This is great. We got a lot of you guys are, you're like 
you're pumping it out now. This is great, all this stuff. Any of the illustrators with any other projects that you're doing? I know that Sarah, you're doing you're doing more illustrations for the um, uh, Death and Tax Man. Well, hopefully. <laughs> well, you're part oh. of the uh, Kickstarter, so. Mm -hmm. So it's we part are, of our stretch goals. Yep, we we've got the uh, cover art um, already. We're you know she's working on the cover design, and um, with stretch goals, we'll have interior art as well. That's great. And as we're going over these last little bits here, make sure you get your copy of either the book uh, from Bam there, so it's a signed book, or you can go to uh, uh, Amazon or wherever you get your audiobooks and get the audiobook because it's just it is so cool. All three of uh, Jim, Tamara, and, and Taylor recorded, combined, there are like over 500 audiobooks they've produced uh, that they've recorded. Uh, Jim is known as the man of a thousand voices. He does all the stuff. He's the one at, at the event. Um, did um, he, announced, he announced the award in the voice of Picard. It was pretty funny. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, good. Um, anybody else then? Yes. Yeah, I, I got a question. Uh, my mom sent me a text. Uh, my mom from my speech. <laughs> she said, <laughs> she's an artist and she's actually a professional artist. So she couldn't apply if she wanted to. And she wanted to ask perhaps Sarah, what medium that you draw in? Initially. I paint with oil paints primarily. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me see if I got the question completely correct. Because her mic isn't working either. No. Oh. Yeah, when they paint or draw their illustrations. So you start in oil and stay in oil. I start with pencil, I guess. So I start mostly with pencil or sometimes digital, um, but my final is in oil. All right, awesome. Thanks. And the little one next to her finishes it off. <laughs> I, I'm working on an oil painting of this one, but this was all in a biological material. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anybody else? Anything else before we wrap up here? This has been uh, this has been a real fun event, and uh, it's been great seeing you all again too. Because it was so much fun at, uh, at that whirlwind week called Writers of the Future um, a month ago, and uh, we're still cranking. We've we still periodically hit the bestseller lists uh, with Amazon, and we're continuing to grow up with these events. Now this will keep the sales going and making it it happen. Um, so thank you all for attending and um, please be sure to you know, share this with your friends to share the news of this book because um, it's people's friends. It's, you know, they'll listen to you. You say, look, get this book. This is really good. Then they will do that. You know, we've, we've put so, so much different media on social, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Um, we have all types of stuff to be able to help you with. We got much more stuff coming out. We recorded enough. Uh, footage from probably about 200 different social posts, videos that we'll be creating and still rolling out with. There's a lot of media still coming down the pipe. Then anybody that wants to from this year, you're all automatically invited as pros to either Dragon Con or Salt Lake City Fanix. You just need to reach out to Emily and let her know, and then we'll get you on the list there to get you badges to come in either Dragon Con or to Salt Lake City Fanix. So um, anyway, um, Thank you very much. Very much appreciate everybody's attending and um, have a great rest of the weekend and enjoy Writers of the Future. Thanks, Bye. John. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, yeah thank you so much. Okay. This is great. Thank you. All great to see you yeah. all. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye. I'll be in touch. Bye. Good, Good to see, see you guys. Reunion. Yeah. Reunion number one. That's <laughs> right. I don't want to sign off. I like seeing everybody again. <laughs> well, you and know, I just realized we didn't even hear from Joni. Hi, I'm here. Hi, Hi Joni. Hi. <laughs> There's always the after party, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> In Fanex, Canada, if you guys are there. Good. All right. So now I'm going to sign off here. Bye-bye. Okay, Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.